So, coming into this week, I just wanted something from WWE. This was the last Raw before WrestleMania. The last attempt, the last effort to do something positive. To give us some momentum and some potential excitement heading into this weekend show. And I know I can't be the only one that last week looked at it and was borderline embarrassed and said, that's really the best you could offer less than two weeks out from Mania. That's just terrible. So I was just asking for something. I was just wishing for something. And I was hoping for something to get me amped up at least a little bit. And I got it. I didn't get a lot of it. And I didn't get it for very long. But I got it. Now, for me, it in large part was just all that opening segment between The Undertaker and Shane McMahon. Yes, the storytelling is lacking. Yes, some of this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But this is the type of shit that you do to get people excited about a big-time fucking featured Mania match. This was fucking incredible. This is the type of shit that we've been looking for. This is the type of shit that makes you want to see these two guys get inside of the ring on Sunday and just beat the holy fucking piss out of each other. Even though I think at the end of the day, when it comes to Mania on Sunday, knowing it's Shane McMahon and knowing what he's going to do in any match that he's in, and knowing it's the fucking Undertaker, and knowing it's Hell in a Cell, knowing it's the Undertaker and a Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania, there was going to be interest there. There was going to be intrigue there. But this whole segment just ramped it up so goddamn much. I mean, they removed Vince from the equation quite a bit, which I thought actually in this case is what needed to be done. And, you know, ending it the way that they ended it and how they did all this was just a fag magnificent, fantastic way to kick off the night. Now, to me, I was a little bit befuddled later on when they interviewed Vince, Vince McMahon backstage. I'm like, okay, here is a chance to tie all of this together. Now you've seen what Shane McMahon is willing to do, and he's not even at Mania yet. You've seen what Shane McMahon is willing to do to his body. You would think that would give you legitimate concern that Undertaker would legitimately have to kill the dude in order to beat him Sunday. So you, as the authority figure, as the dude, as the HNIC of all that we see when it comes to WWE would want to stack the odds against him as much as possible and make the announcement right there that you're going to be the special guest referee for that match at WrestleMania 32. And to my recollection, we didn't get that announcement. We just kind of got a puzzled, befuddled interview by Vince and a stare down between him and Shane. The stare down would have worked a whole lot better if Vince would have sat there, I think, in my opinion, and announced that he was going to be that special guest referee. This was that opportunity. This was this moment, and this was a lost opportunity and a lost moment that really could have tied that in together so well, given us the best storytelling element outside of Shane McMahon fucking dropping an elbow on the tape table and Taker got hurt as a result. It's fantastic. It's magnificent how that worked. He didn't even have to hit the dude and Taker's having to sit there and lie for several minutes because he's hurting so bad. Yeah. Imagine how that works. I also like the thing they did with Ambrose. If for no other reason it was somewhat different, you know, because the shit of Lester and Heyman coming out and doing what they do, that's not any different at all. That's kind of repetitive and frankly played out and kind of dull at this point. A lot of the Lesnar heads, the Brock bots, if you will, the Brock bots don't want to admit that, but the Brock bots have to know that this is true. He's being featured the exact same way every single time for the most part, and it is kind of dull. And we didn't get him the past couple of weeks. You would have liked to have seen him do something a little bit more than what he actually did here. But what they did with Ambrose was kind of different. Now, is this the last thing you really wanted to have him do before the match at Mania? I don't know. You know, would this have maybe been better placed last week? And then maybe this week he actually incorporated one or two of those weapons in a face down with Lesnar that actually came to full-blooded fisticuffs? That probably would have been better. But I will take this because it was tying together what had been done the past couple of weeks with the Mick Foley's and the Terry Funks of the world. You know, you're tying in all these weapons. Ambrose doesn't give a fuck. He's not intimidated. He's not even bothered with this dude. He's looking forward to the violence in the street fight. He's looking forward to the weapons. A sick, sadistic son of a bitch living on the lunatic fringe. 
Sorry, Brock Bots, but the Lesnar Hamas shit's played out. I don't fucking care about it because it's the same shit every single time. It really, truly is if you think about it. At least what Ambrose did had some type of feeling of it being a little bit something different. And it did stand out. Not everybody likes it, and I understand why they didn't like it. Because maybe in this case, I could have said it would have been better if you did this last week and then this week you actually had Ambrose get one over on Lesnar. That's what they really needed to do here. But if it ultimately results in what needs to happen, what should happen, what has to happen, what must happen, which is Dean Ambrose going over Brock Lesnar on Sunday in that street fight at WrestleMania 32, then I'm all for this. I did get some other sadistic humor out of this week's show. I've got to admit, the fact that they were bringing back Eva Marie, <laughs> and you could clearly tell by the way they presented her that they thought she was going to get over as a face, that people were going to be happy to see her come into the rescue, that they thought that this was going to be an exciting thing, that this was going to rivet the audience in fucking Brooklyn, New York. Like they were sitting there and saying, oh, NXT is NXT. None of these people fucking know about NXT. You're in fucking Brooklyn. You're one of the smart capitals of the fucking U.S. and you'd think that they're going to cheer Eva Marie. <laughs> the only thing I got even more pleasure out of on this show, and I have to say, even with the greatness of that Shane and Taker segment to kick off the night, the fact that you had a six-man tag that, mind you, featured people such as Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn and Dolph Ziggler was getting that Randy Orton Sheamus raw match treatment of people chanting for JBL and everything else and chanting that this is boring and that this match sucks and end this match. That's the only thing that was missing, people. And it's okay, I understand. You were feeling it, but you didn't know how to express it. All you have to do is put your hands together and say, one, two, three, fuck Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Fucking Dolph Ziggler match is getting booed out of the goddamn building. <laughs> That's fucking incredible. That is awesome. I absolutely love it. And I also love the news of Snoop Dogg going into the WWE Hall of Fame. And all we need is that one moment. You've got that Divas Triple Threat match. You've got Ric Flair there. You know he's going to be there. Snoop Dogg. He's going into the Hall of Fame. You know he's going to be there. Ric Flair's there with his family. Snoop's family's wrestling in that match. So that means that there's a logical reason to tie in Ric Flair and Snoop in the same match. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a WrestleMania moment. You can have your Sasha Banks victory, and I'd be excited to see that too, yes. And I think that Divas match, that triple threat, could be really something. And that could be a great opportunity for these three young ladies that deserve this spotlight at WrestleMania 32. But at the end of the day, I do not give a fuck. All I'm asking for is one backstage segment, one face-off, one moment in time. Snoop, Rick, it's got to happen. These stars have fucking aligned. We're not getting Taker Sting this year. We're not getting Cena Taker this year. We're not getting The Rock versus Triple H this year at Mania. We're not getting a lot. We're not getting Stephanie and Ronda Rousey. We're not getting that. But we can have a WrestleMania moment with Ric Flair and fucking Snoop Dogg. Who in the hell wouldn't want that? Communist. And fascist pigs. That's fucking who. Incredible stuff. The thought of it. The possibilities of it. Now, with that said, a couple of things. Number one, is it true that this New Day League of Nations match isn't for the title at WrestleMania? I apologize if I said it was for the title before. Apparently, it's not. That's just bootios. It is. I'm going to say it was funny to see Coach. And it's good that they're getting this ESPN treatment. You know, for WrestleMania, that's pretty cool for them. That's giving them a lot of mainstream exposure and attention. And the company's doing a good job of getting that. You know, this partnership they have with ESPN can be productive for them, potentially. And that's a good thing. It was cool to see the coach. You know, and cool to see him talking about bootios, I guess. But why the fuck is this match not for the title? And another question. With the New Day inducting the Fabulous Freebirds of the WWE Hall of Fame, this is like the ultimate F you, fuck you rib to Michael P.S. Hayes. It has to be. It must be. Because you know, you know he ain't fucking down with that. <laughs> uh, 
Oh my god. But anyways, let's move on. Um, and then we get to the, the other major story, and that's what happened between Triple H and Roman Reigns here. Now, uh, to me, this was a miss on several different levels. It's like every time this company does one thing good with Roman Reigns, they take three steps back. And last week, you know, when they had Roman just kind of come out and be badass, you know, they took a step forward, and then later on in the night with the shit backstage, they took a couple steps back. Now here is this moment in time. He comes out to confront Triple H. It's kind of like a step forward, but not really. But then you've got the awkwardness of the promo, and you've got Stephanie in there. And this is, again, where I talk about Stephanie being involved. There's no real payoff at the end of the day to her being involved. It just gums up the works. She just gets in the fucking way. And as much as anything else especially with what went down with the first segment between Triple H and Roman Reigns? Am I the only one that thought it was awkward that Stephanie was there and saw how it just seemed like she was out of place and she was in the fucking way? And she diverted attention away from the real issue that should be Triple H and Roman Reigns and Triple H having the belt and that wonderful promo that he cut talking about how much the belt means to God and how much this is his trinity and to Roman Reigns clearly showing how much that belt means to him and how much he wants to defy God and he wants to take that belt back at Mania. That should be the emphasis. That should be the focus. At this point in time, Stephanie should be a bit player, if not even completely out of the picture. And instead, they're shoehorning her in as a major part of this, and it was just really awkward. But even then, you know, you have Roman looking kind of badass, and you've got him looking like a tough son of a bitch. But then you do the backstage interview with him later on. And you sit there and you got Bubba sitting there mouth and fucking off to him. And it's just you're sitting there the whole time. You're like, is he really supposed to be this fucking stupid that he can't tell as soon as the dude starts backing up that this is a fucking setup? So you could sit there and say they tried to make him look badass by sitting there and going towards Bubba and then taking on the two and then Triple H jumps him from behind. But no, it just really made the dude look fucking stupid. The best badass thing he could have sat there and done was one of two things. Either A, Roman Reigns just stand, stands there and basically punks out Bubba Ray. Or number two, Roman Reigns just completely fucking ignores him. How badass would that be if the dude is sitting there cutting an interview, cutting a promo, and Bubba Ray starts talking shit to him, and Roman Reigns completely punks his ass out by not acknowledging his fucking existence, and he continues to talk and do his promo, and even afterwards, as Bubba Ray is sitting there mouthing off and talking shit to him, Roman Reigns never even pays attention to him and just fucking walks off. That's badass shit right there if you really want to think about it. What he did right there made him look fucking fucking stupid. Now you're making Triple H look fucking stupid. He's got to get the fucking washed up ass Dudleys to fucking help him beat up Roman Reigns. You're the game, the cerebral assassin, the king of kings. God, you're fucking self. The king of daughter makers. And you got to get help to beat up Roman with your Pearl Harbor job? Please. The single biggest thing that this match missed though, or this night missed though, was one thing. And I know that other people have to notice this and other people had to realize this. It's the way this show ended, that main event segment. That was so bad and so god-awful in so many ways. How do you take a big brawl for all and make it suck? That's exactly what they did here with Triple H and Roman Reigns. They took a big brawl for all, and it completely fucking sucked. You know what this night needed? You know what this show needed? You know what this main event segment needed? It needed a six-man tag. It needed The Undertaker, Triple H, and Brock Lesnar versus Shane McMahon, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose. We needed that six-man tag match to close out this night. Now, some of you will say, well, did you really want him to touch? At this point in fucking time, who cares? You take those six men, put them in a main event tag on the Raw Before Mania. You don't have them do a lot, mind you. You know, and you would probably mostly utilize, um, you know, let's say here, uh, Triple H and Ambrose or Reigns for the in-ring action because you want to save some of the other guys. But just to start off with that and just to have the premise of that, Brock Lesnar wrestling a tag match on Raw, The Undertaker wrestling a tag match on Raw, Triple H wrestling a tag match on Raw. I mean, think about that. Shane McMahon wrestling a tag match on Raw. This is not the type of shit that you see every day. You want to talk about something feeling big and something being huge. 
Now you could sit there, have these six dudes fucking have a tag match. You even don't even need to have it go more than a couple of minutes. Get the scare downs that you need to get in. Get the little bit of a tease of an action. And then it's just a fucking brawl for all. And then you fucking bring everybody out. Make it all types of pandemonium and chaos. And yes, it's cool. You've got Roman flying over the top. That is cool no matter what anybody wants to fucking say. But the whole thing and the way it happened sucked. The whole way it should have happened and could have happened could have been fucking incredible and could have been a great way to really cap off this night and could have been a great way to send us off officially to WrestleMania 32 this Sunday. In part, I thought the WWE missed an opportunity here in terms of the way they structured the show this week. I know there's that theory because you have three hours, you have to space it out. At this point in time, I don't agree with that. You're into your go-home show. If you need to bust your nut immediately, you need to bust your nut immediately. And what I'm saying is, is you should have started off with Taker Shane exactly like you did, immediately followed up with the Brock Lesnar, Dean Ambrose stuff right away, then go into something with Triple H and Roman Reigns all in the first 45 minutes to the hour of the show. You can come back to them later on in the night. And in particular, that makes a lot of sense. Does it not? Does it not? If you sit there... And at the end of the night, you have that math, excuse me, that massive six-man tag. You know what? If you want to make it a fucking eight-man tag, you know, instead of having Ryder beat pin Jericho here, how about you throw Chris Jericho in on this team and fucking AJ Styles on this team? Think about that eight-man tag as the main event of Raw on the go-home Raw before WrestleMania. It would change a lot of our perspectives about the build-up to WrestleMania, at least for that night. It would change a lot of the perspectives of the way this Raw ultimately went over, which I think the general consensus was. It started off great and petered off soon afterwards, and by the end, you thought about how terrible it was and how stupid Roman Reigns' push is at the top. And frankly, based off of what I saw, I can't blame you. I happen to enjoy this show a little bit more, I think, than others this week. But that's because of my own reasons. <laughs> they thought she was going to get cheered. Dolph Ziggler, Sammy Zane, Kevin Owens in a match. It's getting booed out of the fucking building and shitted and pooned on. <laughs> Snoop Dogg going into the Hall of Fame. Hallelujah! Light up that fatty, bitches. <laughs> but again, it was a missed opportunity. It could have been so much more than what it actually was. You take and construct the show the way that I just said you should, which is put all that big stuff the first 45 minutes to hour of the show, and then you follow it up. Because you could still do a feature segment with Jericho and Styles. You could still do a feature segment in one of the other premiere slots with the New Day and League of Nations. You'd have had enough. You have the Divas shit in there. You have enough to bide your time and get to that big fucking massive main event. Think about this. You give the main event billing of Raw for that night to be Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Shane McMahon, and I'll throw fucking AJ Styles in there too, that's fine, versus the fucking Undertaker, God, Brock Lesnar, Chris Jericho. That's one of the more interesting and compelling tag matches and Raw matches, period, that we would have seen in quite some time. All of those people that you're used to never seeing wrestle on Raw, not only are they wrestling on Raw, they're wrestling in this big fucking schmoz tag match. The last thing that's going to happen on Raw before WrestleMania on Sunday. You could have done so many more things with doing that, tying into that. You could have still done the big schmas of every fucking buddy come out, and it's not even to break up everything, anything. It's just everybody going at every fucking buddy. What the fuck would be wrong with that at this point? That would be a memorable closeout to the show. That would be a memorable moment. Instead, other than Roman Reigns flying over the top rope, the fans probably largely farted at that finish. As they should have. Just like I farted at that finish. We'll see you at WrestleMania.